Get ready to match the star. Maury Amsterdam. Brent Summer. George Kirby. Joanne Blue. Richard Dawson. And Betty White. As we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Raver. Hello there. Thank you, Jenny Olsen. Thank you. I love your silk. What a wild <laughs> lining. Really? No, is that not too bad? That's not too bad at all. Hey, hey, hey. That's enough. You can oh. stop. <laughs> Her hands fell asleep. I don't want to say mention any see. names, but there are two people on this show Ooh. wearing wings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I... there is something I must say, though. Beginning today and continuing for five days, I am going to be the host on Tattletales, a show that follows a show. Oh. And I'm very happy about that. And the reason I'm doing it is Ann Convy, Bert Convy's wife, that's his show, you see, she had a temper tantrum. She says, I want to be on that show. And the only way she could do it is if he were on the show. So they had to have somebody to do the hosting job, and I'm going to do the host so that Ann Convy doesn't have a temper tantrum. Uh, Rose Carter and Ella Loretta. Hello there, ladies. How are you today, Rose? Fine, thank you. Rose is a current champion with $200, and she's being challenged by Ellen, who's had her first and second round questions, and she has a total of three matches to her credit. And your second round question will come up in a moment or so, right after we do a little bit of business with you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Push the button here and reveal a question for Rose Carter. You need three to tie and four to win. Everybody, please. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> has been around chickens for so long, he's begun to blank like one. <laughs> what I said, Rose, was Colonel Sanders has been around chickens for so long, he's begun to blank like one. You think about that for a second while they're finished. Brad George, finished you're finished, good for finished, you. Finished, yeah. They say You've been around Colonel finished. Sanders a long time, too, or chickens. Oh, I went the wrong way. Brett, what are you doing? When you oh, wear that wig, you just can't think straight, can you? Honey, it shrivels my brain. That's what it does. <laughs> Colonel Sanders has been around chickens so long, when he sees an egg, he lays down on it. <laughs> now he's he just, just laid down on that one. <laughs> Colonel Sanders has been around chickens for so long, he's begun to blink like one. Look like one. He's begun to look like one. Some people say oh, and some people are say applauding. Yay. Yeah, some say yay, and some say nay. What do you say? Well, I haven't seen too many chickens with a mustache and a beard. <laughs> so I think he began to cluck like one. Cluck like a chicken. Brett, what did you find to think of? <laughs> you know I could do imitations. No, do I'm a radio the Jonathan Winters. Uh, I said talk. Yes. Oh, you do imitations, George? <laughs> uh, cluck like a chicken. Uh -oh. Gotta match everybody else to stay in the game, Rose. Let's see what happens here. Go, Joanne. Everyone knows Look. That chickens have beards. All right, there's one for you. You've been around chickens for so long, you're gonna look like one. Is her answer? What's yours? Of course, it's my answer as well. Oh, look yeah. like one there. Don't tell us, Betty. All right, it's all up to Betty White now. Oh, it's such a, a fun position. A win or a lose or a tie. Then. Oh, he's beginning to crow like a. Crow, crow, oh, the game. Come on down. Congratulations. That's $100 for you. Are you stand by for a moment or so? We've got to say goodbye to Rose Carter, but she's not going to leave empty-handed. She's got $200 in her account, and we thank you for being with us. Thank you. I had lots of fun. Good. Goodbye, Rose. Brett, you didn't wait to Rose. She's gone, Brett. Too late. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Well, you know that you're going to have a go at over $5,000 here. In the Big Money Super Match, we polled a recent studio audience, Ellen, and we got their best response to this. Run for blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, it's $250 for you. And if you match a third, it's $100 for you. You do have green eyes. And the three celebrities are allowed to help. Which ones would you like a little help from? Uh, Richard, please. Richard, please. What do you say, Richard? Run for your life. Run for your life. Okay, one more. Betty. Betty White? Run for the money. Run for the money. Isn't that one for the money? Run for the money. Run for the oh, money. And two for the money. show. Okay. <laughs> one for the money. 
the money. That's a Chinese the saying, isn't it? Oh, you give him for the run money. for his money? Run for the money. Right. No, that's right. That's, that's right. I'm only kidding. The bank could be in trouble. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and George. George Kirby, have you got a, a response to that? Run for... For good. <laughs> <laughs> Run for good? How about run for president? No, <laughs> it's George. We're oh, pardon looking me. For I'm sorry. I was just trying to help you. Well, George. run for good. I guess that's all it comes to his oh, mind. Run for good. Run for your life. Run for your money. And you may choose one of those or give us one of your own. Ellen, what would you like to do? Well, I thought of run for your life right away. So. <laughs> run for your life. Okay. That's the one we're looking for. Let's find out if it's up there. And if so, where? First, may we see the $100 response? Run for cover. Ah. Uh -huh. Now you tell us. Run Looking for run for your, what is it? Run for your life. I knew Maybe you could do it. The two hundred and fifty dollar response. Run for the money. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Run for that and four to go. Okay, go ahead. Here's your last chance, Ellen. Run for your life. The five hundred dollar response. $500. We congratulate you, and that means you're going to play for 10 times that amount now, or $5,000. And to collect that, you've got to match one celebrity, and this will have to be an exact match. Choose one now, if you please. Well, I have to go with Richard. You have to go with Richard. Okay. Pretty stingy. I won her $500. I didn't even get a hug. Surprise. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. Later. <laughs> Mexico City. It's yeah. my show. What do I... No, no. I'm only kidding. I'll see Here's... if she has a friend. <laughs> Here's the $5,000 dollar question. Okay. Blank top. Blank top. T-O-P. <laughs> Having a little trouble. Have we got enough music? <laughs> Hard one. Okay, he's finished. Now, Ellen, we need a response from you that you think will match his answer. How do you fill in that blank? Blank top. I hope he drinks a lot of soft drinks. Pop top. Pop top. That's a thing that you pop off of the aluminum can or whatever it is there. All right, for $5,000, may we see your answer? Well, it's just as bad as yours, Don. I could <laughs> flat top. Flat top. I could think of. What would you have said? Oh, I Big top, top. Right? Big top Big and top, pop right? top are there. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's a... Well, that gives you a little bit of Mexico City. I don't no care. Anarchy. I'm no anarchy. Sorry, no. I just asked, well, what yeah. your opinion was. Got top very top. hostile there, didn't it? She's top up top. to, that's right, she's up to $600, which ain't bad, and she's going to play another game, which ain't bad either. And we'll start that game right after we have this message. Okay. I tell you, we, we can't come on the air like that with applause. Uh, and it's going to lay an egg here in the studio, but we, for the benefit of the millions of you at home, we've got to got to tell you what Maury just said. Well, he I just said I get in the book. Yes. Yeah, I said Maury's I have a new a book. cookbook on the what market for drunks. Funny you should ask. It's called <laughs> Betty Cooker's Crockbook. <laughs> Thanks for your help, audience. You're a grand bunch. Now we're going to start another game. To do that, we've got to introduce a player with a great deal of pleasure. We present <laughs> Kathy Miholovich. Hello, Kathy. Hey. Kath so you're Kathy Miholovich. Miholovich. Holy mackerel. Reminds me, I must get Parker House rolls for breakfast. <laughs> Kathy, you're a very pretty lady, and don't pay any attention to them. Just pay attention to me, will you? No, uh, Miholovic is a Slavic name, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You speak Serbo-Croatian? A little. A little bit? Were your parents born there or here? No, here. They were born here, but your grandparents were born there. Mm-hmm, one. You know how to say Dobardan? You know what that means? Dobla pala kako si ti. Oh, that's uh, very good, you see. <laughs> Translation is, can you tell me where the men's room no, is? No, no, no. <laughs> she says, I am very well, thank you. How are you? Dobro, hala lepa, kako si ti, is what she said there. Oh, really? And she said it very well, and she's got well, a good tell accent. tell her, come see, come sa. No. Got <laughs> No, 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 no. I'll push the button here, and we'll begin. If you're ready, Kathy, good luck to both ladies. 
Here is our first round questions, and we ask the challenger to make a selection. I'll try A. A is what she wants. Oh, hey, listen, here's a question, friends. <laughs> a query, yes. It's, it's about all in the family. Now, you oh. all know that George is one of the world's great uh, uh, mimics and mimes. And uh, George, we all know that you do an impression of Archie and Edith. So oh, I think, time. Yeah, well, no, he does not both, not at the same time. But Careful, why don't you? darling, your cord is catching. Yes. <laughs> why don't you uh, uh, do this? You know, uh, there's a little narrative there. That I'll give you a chance to look it over for a second. And you play both Archie and Edith as you do in your act. There. Would you leave him alone while he's looking it over? I'm bit? trying to help him through osmosis. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready, George? Uh, okay, right. you're on, George. All right. uh, oh. As Edith Bunker started to kiss Archie, she said, Oh, Archie, you've got a ring around the collar. <laughs> and Archie said, Listen, you dingbat. I may have ring around the collar, but you've got blank. <laughs> Says, oh, Archie, you've got ring around the collar. Archie said, listen, you dingbat, I, I may have ring around the collar, but you've got blank. Everybody plays. You've got, well, come on now, this is a, such an obvious, easy one. I don't watch that show. Well, no, but just from the situation, you don't have to watch a show. You know who Edith Bunker is, and you know who Archie is. She says, who oh, Archie. They? <laughs> you've got ring around the collar, and Archie said, listen, you dingbat, I may have ring around the collar, but you've got... Da -da -da. Da -da 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 I don't know. I'm just playing around here. This guy. All right. All set. George, did you write one? Not yet. Not yet? Shall I read? Would you like to read it again? <laughs> what would? Come on now, put it down there. What Archie would say to Edith? Edith, as he says. Edith is awake. Yeah. Yeah. The H is silent. Of course I think I've survived. Be gentle with George. He's going through osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, he's ready now. So we call on Kathy. Uh -huh. As Edith Bunker started to kiss Archie, she said, Oh, Archie, you've got ring around the collar. And Archie said, Listen, you dingbat, I may have ring around the collar, but you've got... Bad breath. That's the answer. That's a terrific answer there. I uh, thought everybody would say that. But, Maury, what did you say? No, I no? didn't think so. I think, in, uh, despite the fact he calls her dingbat, he's still kind of nice to her when yeah. it comes to being... He just says, you've got a ring around your nose. <laughs> ring around your nose. <laughs> you had to say that, huh? Why not? Okay. Good day for it. <laughs> Brett, what did racer? you say? That's a real winner, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I wish I could top it. <laughs> you can't bottom it. What did you say? I said you can't. <laughs> I said you've got no brains. No brains. That's what I, I, I hated that question. Oh, it was a good George, question. She talked it. <laughs> would you believe it? That's what I figured that he would say. See, I may have a ring around the corner. Well, you got no brains. No brains. Thank you, George. Well, oh. Bad Brent, I think, is a good answer there. What do you say there, Obviously, lady? Obviously, they have no brains, and I do, because I said bad breath. Like There's that. one for Kathy. Okay. What did you say, Richard? Archie, I agree with him. No brains, but he would put it that eloquently. He'd say, yep. you got nothing upstairs. That's the way he'd say it, too. You rascal. Bad breath is the answer she's looking for. What do you say, lady? I don't like, in deference to my friend Miss Summers, I don't like to say bad breath. Oh. I think Brett is very good, as a matter of fact. You have tattletale gray. Tattletale gray. <laughs> OK, so you scored one match there, Kathy. And oh. your first round question I comes up in a moment or so. But right now, friends, we've got to pause for this message of interest. Okay, your first round question reads as follows. <coughs> I'm terribly sorry. Camille. <laughs> well, I was in the terminal row up here this I last know. week <laughs> with Ron Adams running a favor and Charles Nelson Riley dying of pneumonia yeah. or whatever it is he oh, has. Poor Charles is a little bit under the weather. That's why he's not with us, and we're delighted to have whoever we have with us here today. Yeah. And she Charles will be back next time. She doesn't get anything personally. She's just a carrier. <laughs> I've been sneezing since I sat down here. Shall we get on with it, folks? Yes. All right. Would you like to have a go at this? Henry Kissinger's wife called him at work and asked him to bring blank home for dinner. <laughs> Henry Kissinger's wife called him at work and asked him to bring blank home for dinner. Go. 
Do not look into my pretty brown eyes. I write something on the <laughs> Write I something on the Many ways to go. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I do. Doesn't it give you a lot of faith Good. when the Secretary of State has a temper fit on the air? Yes. Temper <laughs> <laughs> oh, temper. All right, George, we're waiting for you up there. Just uh, trust your first instinct, George, and that'll be okay. There we go. Now we'll call on Ellen. Henry Kissinger's wife called him at work and asked him to bring Blank home for dinner. Nixon. Mr. Nixon. Okay. She says, bring him home. We'll carve him up. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't say that. All right, boy. May we hear your response? The reason why she said bring him home because he likes kosher food. Oh, that's why I said. Oh, that's right. Okay, Brett. I didn't say Nixon. You didn't say Nixon. I said Dick. We're very friendly. Oh, I see. Okay, George. I'm very sorry, but I didn't have that one. You didn't have that one. And I didn't think that joke was very funny about cutting me up. <laughs> they wanted me to bring home some Chinese food. Some Chinese food. Okay. <laughs> Okay, George. Joanne? I can't top that. Bring Blank home for dinner. Well, I thought that he'd like to have Gold in My Ear home for dinner. Sure. <laughs> She's very That's good. Thing. No, that's well, okay. You. A very good answer. Richard? Bring Mr. Nixon home for dinner. I think she'd find him very hard to swallow. Uh, <laughs> but what is uh, Henry Kissinger? He is the Secretary of State. State. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joel. That goes with ring around your nose. <laughs> now we go from left field over to Betty White. There. <laughs> Mrs. Kissinger must be some cut up. She said, Nixon. Nixon. Okay. So that's three to one the score now at the end of round one. Let's go to round two and ask Kathy to make a selection. Hey. Hey, listen, you know, uh, I was so enchanted to see this pretty lady when she came out here. I forgot to ask her the story of her life. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about, Kathy, where you live and all that? Well, I'm from Montebello, and I'm an executive secretary, and I love to travel. In fact, I just got back from a vacation in Mazatlan where I caught my first marlin, 168 pounds. Where did you go to I'll catch that? Where? Mazatlan, Mexico. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Deep sea fishing. Oh, nice. 168 168 pounds? What'd you do with it? <laughs> I'm going to have it mounted. Really? Are just they won't believe it. They won't believe it until they yeah, see it. That's really <laughs> terrific. I think that's marvelous. Okay. <laughs> oh, does she have Are you married, <laughs> Kathy? Single. You're single? She's single. Yes. Oh, right. Oh, just a second. No, 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 no. None of that on this show. This is not the I'm going to talk about Marlon with you a little later. Okay. Uh, we'll do Marlon some tuna fishing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Here we go. When Big Rocco... That's enough for me. No, no, no. <laughs> When Big Rocco saw the terrible room the hotel gave him, he threw the blank out the window. <laughs> when Big Rocco saw the terrible room the hotel gave him, he threw the blank out the window. You're the only one who doesn't play, right? I know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. You matched in the first round. Big Rocco, you see. When he saw the terrible I room. I two, two, three, or three answers okay. in mind, so I just. Oh, I'm... there's one terrific one. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's one terrific one. It's one terrific for... one. There is. It's easy for you to say. You're not up here under pressure, making a fool of yourself. Okay, Kathy. When Big Rocco saw the terrible room the hotel gave him, he threw the blank out the window. The bed. The bed. The bed. That's not the terrific answer I had in mind. But I, now that I hear it, I guess it's not too bad. No? There was no bed. That's why he got mad. Oh. He picked a bellboy up and threw him out That's the window. That's the answer I had. The bellboy. Bellboy. Brett? I was torn between bellhop and manager, so I put bellhop, but I guess I should have put bell. Oh. Okay, George. Well, if he's big and bad like I think he is, he's going to throw the bed out the window. Bill. Throw the bed out the window. Okay. Throw the bed out the window. What do you say, uh, you Richard? Know, a pretty girl like that's single. <laughs> yeah. you like a yo-yo, I wrote bellboy. Uh, <laughs> will you ever forgive me? Uh, will you? Yes. Don't no. just leave me here. Tell me. Will you forgive me? <laughs> no, yeah. she will not I'll forgive I'll learn me. Slavic or whatever language it is. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. go Marlin well, That's enough. <laughs> there we be you attend to your business. I'll attend. Show us your card, would you please? I don't want to because I have bellhop. I don't bell want to do Another $100 for you. Well, Kathy, I'm sorry to see you go. We have a gift for you. Together with our thanks, and as we say in Serbo-Croatian, Zbogum. 
Well, that means uh, God be with you. Thank you. Thank Kathy you. Miholovich. We'll be back in a moment right after this message. We're going to get this whole bunch together again oh, at some soon date and do it all over. Gene Rayburn for Match Game 74. Goodbye.